Notice of public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act, notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene an executive session and a regular meeting on Tuesday, September 20th, 2011, at 5.45 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Old Federal Building located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Executive Session Item A, Attorney Consultation pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code in connection with pending litigation styled and numbered BFFA Local 970 versus City of Brownsville, <coughs> cause number 2011-DCL-5738-E in Cameron County. Mayor, I'm going to go into executive session. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, Stella, we're, it's about 6.15. Our meeting was called for 6, so we're ready to go. Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Right. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you that you love us when we're doing well and when we're not. But Lord, for this meeting tonight, I ask you to give each of our leaders divine discernment, direction, and anointing to make the decisions that will be good for this city. Help us to see what is obvious, help each of them to see what is not obvious, and what the long-reaching effects will be of each item. We thank you and praise you for that, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, the mayor's report, basically, um, uh, the only thing I'd like to report is that there was a congressional hearing at the University of Texas in Brownsville yesterday. Um, Chief Carlos Garcia testified, as well as myself, as well as County Judge uh, Carlos Cascos. Um, for those of you who uh, did not see what was reported, um, basically, and I'd like this to be out as public as possible, um, is that even though we have issues with the border and the, um, the, uh, the Mexican government is fighting uh, bravely and courageously against the, um, the drug cartels. The city of Brownsville is a safe place to be. We're open for business. Um, we, uh, we commend the police department for their wonderful work. Uh, we ask that they continue to do so. Uh, but for all of you who are all of our ambassadors to the city of Brownsville, uh, don't let anybody uh, get away with the, uh, the type of uh, language that we hear, uh, uh, maybe we should not take our kids to Brownsville, maybe we should not do this or do that because Brownsville is so close to the border. Uh, Brownsville is on the border, but it's a safe city, and um, tell them, like I told them yesterday, we're open for business. Commissioner? Rick? On my commissioner's report, I wanted to do a little bit of both. Uh, I'm going to have a meeting, a town hall meeting on Sunday, September 25th at Good Shepherd Catholic Church at 3 p.m. at the Parish Hall. It's basically dealing with the construction going on right now on East Avenue and Tulipan. Uh, it, it's not a city project. It's a project from PUB, but the community wants answers. Uh, they haven't received the answers they wanted, and therefore I'm scheduling that meeting. Uh, PUB is not attending but they have given me the material that I need to be able to present to the citizens. And so therefore, that town hall meeting, I will deal with other issues if they arise, but the purpose of that meeting is 
so that we can deal with the issue right now with the drainage project going on on East Avenue and Tulipan. What, and what time will that be? At 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And if you'll allow me, no más quiero lograr este medio para avisarle a la gente que este domingo a las 3 de la tarde en la parroquia Buen Pastor en la East Avenue voy a estar teniendo una junta para la comunidad. Este, se va a estar hablando directamente del proyecto que está llevando ahorita corriendo las líneas sanitarias de en East Avenue Tulipán, pero a ese momento también ciudadana, la ciudadanía, la gente de ahí que quiere venir a, a hablar de ciertos uh, problemas que puedan tener, pueden venir ese tiempo. Entonces va a ser este domingo a las 3 de la tarde en la parroquia Good Shepherd Catholic Church en East Avenue. Gracias. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That, that ends our reports. Okay. Consent agenda items A and B. I've got a motion and a second for approval of the consent items number three, A through A and B. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> public hearings. Item four, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2011-022 to rezone from dwelling G to professional office G for block one, lot one of North Paredes Business Plaza located at 5420 Paredes Line Road, Brownsville, Texas. Honorable Mayor City Commission, uh, the property here is sitting in red, uh, professional office. It's currently zoned dwelling. Uh, the applicant and the PNZ unanimously approved uh, a, a professional office uh, zoning for it. Um, this is a public hearing. And, and this, uh, this uh, project is under the uh, Commissioner's District of uh, number two. Okay. This is a public hearing. It's an action item. Do I hear a motion? Close public hearing first. Motion to close the public hearing. Is oh, okay. Close. I'm sorry. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, before you go on, Ben, the uh, commissioner uh, was asking me, Pete, do we have to have a final reading of section B of the consent item, the approval, and second of the final reading of the ordinance number 2011-1548? That, that's part of the consent. Okay. It, that's part of the consent already. It. it doesn't have to be read. It says no. reading, so we don't read it. That's the final. That's the final. It's, never, it's always part of the consent. Thank you, Don. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, the motion was to close the public hearing. Okay. Action. Now we have an action item. Move your approval. Have you All those in favor say aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. On this next item, uh, I ask for it to be tabled. The applicant is requesting for it to be tabled. There's a concurrent application being prepared for a specific use. Okay. So I ask this item to be tabled, please. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion, anybody opposed? Motion carries. Tabled. <clears throat> item six, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2011. Dash 024 to rezone from dwelling G to medium <coughs> retail G. 0.454 acres of track 2 subdivision A located at 301 Calle Milpa Verde in Brownsville. Can you get the map, please? Uh, in this particular case, the, the applicant would like to have a retail uh, complex there on Calle Milpa Verde and by the drainage ditch. Uh, the Plan Zoning Commission will unanimously approve this application. Uh, for approval is a public hearing. We're close. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Now we have an action item. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item seven, public hearing and action on first reading on or of ordinance number two thirty five. 2011-025 to rezone from dwelling G to light retail G for, for 0.1383 acres out of block 28 of Acacia Lake Garden subdivision located at 125 Calle Milpa Verde. Honorable Mayor and City Commission, this is the property shaded in red. Here they would like to have a maintenance garage. Uh, the Planning Zoning Commission 
order to approve or recommend this application to you unanimously. Uh, this is a public hearing. I'll close. Second. Moved and closed. Moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Action item. Would approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 8, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2011-025-S to allow general retail maintenance shop uh, re on a light retail G for, one, for point one eight three acres of block 28 of Acacia Lake Garden subdivision located at 195 Calle Milpa Verde. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe we should have read those together, but yeah. the, in here there's a site-specific uh, plan for, for the garage. We, uh, the, there's an elevation and where the garage will sit on that triangular uh, piece of property. Again, here with this case, the, uh, the applicant uh, submitted his narratives and, and his site plan, and the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, voted uh, approval, and it's been recommended to you for your approval unanimously from, from the Planning and Zoning Commission. It is a public uh, hearing as well. Keep close. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Would approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 9, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2011-027-S to allow a light commercial specific use in a general retail for 1.610 acres out of lot 1 of Pedro Morales Tract located near US 281 and West Elizabeth Street. Honorable Mayor, uh, this is a property on Military and West Elizabeth. Uh, the proposed use in this specific use is a car lot. Um, the Planning Zoning Commission will announce to approve this application to you for your approval. So this is a public hearing. This is in, um, this is in West Brownsville. Move to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2011-029-S to allow an apartment specific use in a dwelling specific area for 0.48 acres out of lot 12 and 13 of block one of Renfro Terrace subdivision located near Renfro Street and Boca Chica Boulevard. I will mayor and city commission, this is a specific use for uh, four apartments. Um, there's a site plan in your packet. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously approved this application. This is a public hearing. Move to close public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Move approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, public hearing and action to accept the 2011 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program for $88,294, funds <coughs> which will be divided as agreed between the City of Brownsville Police Department, Cameron County, and Cameron County as, desperate, as disparate, disparate allocations. The City of Brownsville Police Department share is $60,001, and the Cameron County share is $28,293. Mayor, members of the Commission, good evening. Uh, a couple of months ago, I came before the Commission seeking authorization to apply for this grant. We did. Uh, the grant has been awarded, so I'm here before you all uh, seeking approval to accept the grant, but a public hearing is required uh, to seek input from the public as to uh, what we should, you know, buy with, with the allocated funds. Uh, my recommendation is to buy, to continue buying portable radios so that we can uh, continue to transition into the P25 digital radio system by the year 2015. But it's public hearing. Move to close public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Under for the grant. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12, public hearing and action to, act, to accept the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program Award for $64,230, <coughs> funds which will be used for the purchase of a fingerprint identification system. This grant has been awarded to us by the uh, Lower Rio Grande, uh, Lower Rio Grande Development Council. Uh, in this amount, 
Uh, our intention is to buy an electronic fingerprint system to be able to fingerprint all, our, all, all persons that are booked into our, our jail system and electronically submit their fingerprint straight to Austin. And in turn, it will also allow us to purchase nine mobile identification kits to be able to carry in our patrol units to be able to uh, fingerprint individuals uh, if we need uh, quick and immediate identification of those individuals out on the field. There you go. It's a public hearing. We're close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I approve it. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Item 13, public comment. Do we have any public comments? There are no public comments. 13 is an action item, consideration and action on resolution number 2011-054 to ratify the acceptance of a grant from the Federal Aviation Administration for AIP funds in the amount of $914,000 for the engineering work for a series of capital improvement projects at the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. Mayor, member of the commission, as you note, the, uh, the purpose for this item is to request city commission ratification of the acceptance of this $914,000 grant from the FAA for AIP funding to carry out a series of projects which we brought before you earlier, I believe it was in April. Uh, this does the engineering work associated with the project so that we'll be in a position to submit construction documents and, and go out to bids on these projects to obtain FAA funding. Um, we recommend approval of the uh, and, uh, ratification of the resolution. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 15, consideration and action to authorize the Transit Advisory Committee to implement an annual fundraising sponsorship event. Good afternoon. Um, this item is um, on bef uh, before you um, because uh, at the request of the Transit Advisory Committee, um, they are requesting uh, authorization to implement an annual event that will allow the committee to conduct a fundraiser that would allow us to purchase equipment and um, bus shelters and passes for individuals that need transportation as far as passes are concerned um, for the Bronzeville, uh, for, for people that need um, services from Bronzeville Urban System. The Transit Advisory Committee uh, would be uh, managing uh, the event and they would be um, hosting it and, and sponsoring and, and um, coordinating that event. Um, Ms. Uh, Sylvia Berry, who is the, the secretary for the advisory, is here and uh, she's in the audience. And she's um, um, volunteered her time to share the committee, to share a fundraising committee that would uh, have a, an annual event that would um, raise funds for public use service for the bus for the bus department. Have you cleared everything through, because it's clearly not an established 501c3 not for profit. No. They, but the, will those funds be going through the city or where will they be? The funds would be going through the city of Brownsville and they would be uh, managed uh, by the transit advisory. They would um, recommend how those funds would be utilized. I know that we've had several requests to our department um, for people that have wanted passes for the homeless program. I know that I talked to Commissioner uh, Zamora about that several months ago, but she was not the first person that had addressed that concern. And there's no mechanism for us to be able to just give uh, bus, uh, bus passes to people. Uh, this would allow the opportunity for people that might be need, might, uh, be in need of, of that such a service to go before the transit advisory committee and make that request and we have those funds available then they could uh, you know um, authorize to do that but all the funds would would come to the city of Brownsville and they would be um, give um, allocated to fund 65 which is the transit uh, the public transit fund when they set up the guidelines as far as how they'll be distributed or what a person can do 
to be able to qualify, would you be kind enough to bring a presentation to the commission so that we could see exactly how that's going to happen? Sure. Thank yes. You. Yeah, it would be nice to have a written criteria so that it would be a standard operating procedure as to who is who would be eligible and who would not be eligible. Right. Yeah, and that's that's something that we're um, that we will be working on and put together at our advice. We meet tomorrow, and um, based on this decision, then that's probably we will move forward with that action, with putting the policies and procedures in place and incorporating those policies and procedures into the Transit Advisory Committee bylaws. You know, Norman, just, just in an abundance of precaution, would it be possible, and I, I don't know whether this needs to be an action item that has to be voted on immediately, but wouldn't it be nice to have everything already in place so that we know that we're voting on something that you're going to go out and raise funds and how it's going to be applied? It's, was that, or, or is there some need for, for us to act tonight? Um, I think this is something that um, had come up to my attention at, the, at our last meeting, and we, I just wasn't sure how we were going to approve this, so I went before and talked to uh, Pete and talked to legal and kind of got this guidance. But um, we could certainly put the policies and procedures in place. You know, I would, I would suggest that we have all the criteria done and ahead of time and a, perhaps maybe a packet submitted to each one of the commissioners so they know exactly. I, I, I love the idea. I mm -hmm. think it's a great idea. I thought it was a great idea too you know, when it was. Uh, and I commend Commissioner Samoda for thinking about this one. But what I'd like to do is to be able not to have any um, problems down the road by saying everybody understands who the, who these things these <coughs> funds are going to go to. Uh, if if that if that's the the wish of the commission, I don't know. It's still an action item, so you guys, you know. Yes, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll do whatever you direct me to do. I mean, we can set up the policies and procedures that shouldn't take us that long. I mean, just putting the, the policies and procedures together and and implementing that, or you can approve and. I moved a. Briefly table until the p policies and procedures are set up and br be brought to the commission. Not not table for an indefinite time. Oh, well, I can bring it to the once, next meeting. Once the procedures are ready, put it back on the agenda and bring it back to us. Yeah. Okay. And, and Estella, if you could put it for the next meeting, we'd be happy to, to deal with it. And again, do not take this as something that we're not. No, I understand. Okay. I told and you. Like you have another, feel free to call me up for the music, and I'll be glad to help you. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yes, I will. Thank you. Okay, Move to table. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Be tabled. Item 16, consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2011-055, approving a plan of finance to issue general obligation refunding bonds to refund certain outstanding obligations of the city and authorizing the city staff and professionals and professional advisors to prepare and distribute all documents and to take all actions deemed necessary in connection with preparing for the issuance of such bonds, including the selection of underwriters. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, this item is to uh, give us authorization to refund some of our uh, long-term bonds that will assist us uh, on the long run. And, and, and right now, if we go ahead and refund some of these bonds, there's potential of uh, savings of about 5.25 percent. Um, Andres, please? yes, oh, percentage, it? percentage, yes. about 5.25 percent. Uh, Mr. Andres Rios, uh, he is here, um, and he'll make the presentation, or this rather. Andres, and he'll show you where the where the savings are, and uh, and obviously we definitely recommend this. Go to page six. Yeah. There. Okay. Perfect. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Andres Ortiz. I'm here with Estrada Hinojosa, URFA. Um, as Mr. Hinojosa discussed with you previously, uh, there is currently an opportunity to refund uh, some of your outstanding debt for debt service savings. Uh, currently, you can refund about 17 or 18 million of bonds uh, that currently carry an interest rate of about 4.677. Uh, at a rate of 2.723. Uh, when we do the refunding, that will produce uh, present value savings of about a million dollars, representing 5.5% uh, as a percentage of the refunded bonds. Uh, what we're seeking here tonight is authorization to proceed with this plan of finance. Um, very briefly on the refund, right? That one. Um, 
That is what your debt service looks like uh, now on the left, and after the refunding, it'll be lowered a little bit as a result of the savings. Um, this assumes that interest rates will stay at or near the levels that they are at now. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, it's an action item. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Andres. Item 17, consideration and action to encumber or to carry over $30,000 of the Brownsville Beautification Committee's fiscal year 2011 unspent funds to fiscal year 2012 and to encumber or carry over $408,451 of the Brownsville Public Library's fiscal year 2011 unspent funds to fiscal year 2012. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, right now the Brownsville Beautification Committee has funds to... Uh, to construct a, uh, a, a sign at the entrance of Brownsville near the uh, Navigation District. As of uh, right now, they will not be able to uh, incur those funds, so we're asking the City Commission to go ahead and give us authorization to carry over those funds to <coughs> fiscal year 2012. Also, the library has some uh, funds that they'll be using for, for some of the error grants as the local share, and that has not been allocated or spent. It's in the budget. We are asking the City Commission to go ahead and, and carry over those funds into fiscal year 2012. That's what this action item is for. Would you approve? Second. I have a question. I'm sorry. This is for the project or the presentation we had not too long ago regarding the, the signage that was going to be put up at the port? Yes. That 30000 yes. yes. That's what this is. And so if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying that it's not going to be done? Not but in this year. Not we're this year. Carrying. It's carrying, carrying that money over for next year, so it can be done next year sometime. Okay. I was under the impression that it was going to be done this year. It just hasn't happened. It hasn't in our happened. Fiscal, in our fiscal no. years, over. Okay. It's almost, uh, it ends in September, and they are telling us that they will not be able to spend those funds that are already earmarked under 2011, and they're asking us if it's possible for us to go ahead and carry those funds into fiscal year 2012. Okay. Did I have a motion on the floor? That's in it. a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 18, consideration and action to award the medical insurance specific stop loss contract to a stop loss insurance carrier. Honorable Mayor, members by TML, they went ahead and did all the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ch uh, changes or actually the revisions, not the revisions, but the analysis. And it has been determined that the best quote that came in was quote number one under national med excess. And that's, that's even better than the current rate that uh, we have with ING. We estimate that the annual premium uh, for the uh, national med excess is $585,020 versus $615,915 that we're currently paying with, with ING. And again, this is based on the population of, of, of the city of the city so we are recommending that uh, we go ahead and award the stop loss uh, insurance to the national met excess Pete, Mayor, go ahead, sure. um, why did we is there a particular reason why we use TML to solicit proposals or is it be I mean uh, well they are they are the third party administrator and then there are the, the experts they, so they serve yes. as our TPA yes Okay. Did we advertise locally yes. in yes, the paper for this? Yes. Okay. Basically, as our administrator, the, this is the, the lowest. Uh, they are the, that's, this is the best uh, uh, bid or quote that came in. Right. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Pete. Item 19. Consideration and action to award a contract for the construction of the relocation and replacement of runway 17 visual approach slope indicator with precision approach path indicator. It's a project of the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners, uh, staff recommends to award a contract for the construction uh, and relocation and replacement of runway 17, which is called BASI, with the PAPI project 
for the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport to F&W Electrical Contractors of Floresville, Texas, the low responsible bidder, for a bid amount of $50,000. Completion time for this project shall be 10 co consecutive calendar days, and funding for this contract is available through a 95% AIP funds and a 5% PFC funds. Airport um, administration concurs with this recommendation. Your motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 20, consideration and action to award a contract for a wildlife hazard assessment and management plan for the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. The staff recommendation is to award a contract for wildlife hazard assessment and management plan for the uh, Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport to AMEC Earth and Environment Incorporated of Santa Barbara, California, <coughs> excuse me, for a proposal amount of $164,895. Uh, this contract should be completed within 20 months uh, as per the schedule provided in the proposal. And funding for these uh, services are available through an <coughs> FAA fund grant uh, for the wildlife hazard assessment and the phase two for, the, for these uh, same uh, assessment or pending uh, funding, uh, funding contingent on, on the study. So that there's going to be a second phase that I'm going to be bringing back. Action item, do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 21, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase, delivery, and installation of VISIX Access TV Display Player Software for the Brownsville Multimodal Terminal Project. Staff recommends to award a contract for the purchase, delivery, and installation of uh, VISIX Access TV Display Player Software for the Brownsville Multimodal Terminal uh, to VISIX Incorporated of uh, Norcross, Georgia in the amount of $50,232. Funding for this procurement, will, it's available through a federal matching fund of 80% and then the 20% will be covered by, by the city. Bus administration concurs with this recommendation. This is software for the uh, multimodal facility for the general public, such as temperatures, arrivals, and the weather, weather announcements at the new multimodal. Would you approve? I have a question, I'm sorry. And maybe yes, because I'm not understanding. I'm reading through through the documents that were provided to us, and it says that no bids were required. Well, this is this is considered a sole source, a sole source under Chapter 252022 uh, of the Local Government Code. Mm -hmm. It allows it allows for this type of procurement when you own, when you have a, a a sole source commodity or service that is provided by by a company that only. Um, that provide that particular software, you know, like Microsoft, they have copyrights of their software. In this case, this is this is a copyright software also as well. So it is called uh, Soul Source. Ms. Mr. Luna, um, yes, I mean no disrespect when I say this, but you said the same thing when it came to American Surveillance, and they weren't a Soul Source. No, that's a captive, captive procurement. It's when you have when you have a, a service that it's already been provided by a company or firm that is already providing services for the, for the city. And then what you're doing is just providing an additional, an additional component or an additional service for that same company. The difference, the difference is captive versus sole source. Sole source is only provided by a sole source company that, only, um, that can only provide that commodity or service. The other one, a captive, it's like, let me give you an example. If you have our fleet that it's made out of uh, uh, four trucks, and then you want to bring a, a GMC, but you have parts and inventory to fix all the Fords, well, you don't want, you don't want to start buying also uh, parts for Chevy when you already have your fleet that is composed of, of, of four. And you have, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if you understand already what I'm saying. I understand. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'll and be more than happy yeah. to. And, and Robert, just, just yes. so that perhaps maybe for future reference, you know, if, if there is a, a, a particular 
uh, explanation, maybe in parentheses, you know, uh, what's, what, what uh, government code, like when you have a single source, you know, mm -hmm. the, the code pr uh, provision that provides for that so that perhaps maybe we can, you know, we know ahead of time, okay? Yeah, it is provided on the analysis, if, if you notice on yeah, the... It, uh, it's in there, but I just need an explanation because okay. I didn't okay. know okay. what it meant. Sure. Okay. And so another question would be, when the, the product, I guess, was originally bought or purchased through this company, did that go out for a bit? Well, this is brand new software, what we're talking about. This is software that is going to be used on, 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 on equipment that is going to be mounted over there at, uh, at the multimodal facility. This okay. is only what we're, what we're doing right now is, is buying the software. Okay, so the software itself mm -hmm. did not go up for bidding. And the no. items or whatever, wherever you're going to be installing it, that wasn't purchased from this particular company, was it? No, that was, that was a separate procurement. Okay, that's where mistaken. I'm getting confused, because if it's software, shouldn't it have gone up for it's, bidding? It's like buying, buying, buying computers. Let's say, for example, you buy <laughs> computers from Dell, but then you install software from Microsoft. Microsoft is a sole source. They have the copyright of the software. It's a difference between hardware and software. But there's other software that could be used with your products that you currently no, have? Mm -mm. This is a uh, software that we currently have. We purchased this software uh, a couple of years ago, and through the through the, the initial purchase, did go through the procurement process. Okay, so it's you're updating your your. It's not. We're expanding that software to incorporate that was additional question. modules that will now allow us to utilize it um, further. We're not upgrading. We're expanding the capability. Um, but your the original, originally, it did go up for bids. Right, right. Okay. That was about two years ago. And when we purchased this, when we purchased software in our department, we purchased with only the modules that we might need at that time okay. with the condition that as we expand, we're able to purchase additional modules. And that's basically what we're doing now. Okay. We're purchasing the additional modules to be able to give us arrivals, departures, allow us to... Um, allow us to advertise, allow us to um, show the weather channel, uh, basically what you see in, at the airports when you're waiting for. Okay, thank you. That's okay. what I needed, the clarification. Thank, thank you. you. Anything else? I just want to make sure that we're spending the correct money on the correct items because these are very, very, yes. very expensive items and it's only fair that we ask questions because it's I a lot of money. Sure. I appreciate that. Okay, do I hear a motion? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 22, consideration and action to renew a contract for software maintenance and technical support for public safety information system for the Brownsville Police Department and the Brownsville Fire Department. <coughs> Sub recommendation is to award a contract, well, a renewal contract of the software maintenance and technical support for public safety information system in the amount of $101,929 for the Brownsville Police Department and $25,929 for the Brownsville Fire Department to Spillman Technologies out of Lohan, Utah for a total car, uh, contract renewal amount of $127,858. The difference of this renewal reflects an increase of $657 due to the, the additional two modules that were installed. The contract shall uh, commence upon a, uh, approval by city commission and will expire next year, September 30th, 2012. Funding, um, it's available for the renewal of this system to the maintenance and technical support contract uh, to the police department and fund account 01310752 for machinery and equipment. I hear a motion. Well, I guess I have the same questions as the other one. I just want to make sure that it's the same thing. Yeah, this this at the initially was was uh, went out for proposals. What we're doing is since this is a captive, this is a maintenance and technical maintenance. Now we're just doing the renewals. So this went out for proposals seven years ago. Yeah, well, this is this is the main uh, public safety information system that has been running now at PVN and fire department. 
And to answer your question, yes, it was procured at the beginning. Through the bidding process. And so this, this will continue on an ongoing basis, on a yearly basis? That yes, ma'am. have to come back? So if it went up for s in seven years, I don't know, I think that's a little bit too long for it to have gone on. And we just come back and we approve, we keep approving? Like because of the extension, funds. Extension, extension, extension. Mayor, Mayor, City Commission, we purchased this computer aid uh, dispatching records management system in 2005. It cost us over a million dollars. With it came all this software uh, from Silverman Technologies. Basically, what we're doing every year, we're just renewing the maintenance contract on the hardware that we have. So Spielman Technologies is the sole source of the captive vendor for the maintenance of the software program. I can't bring in IBM. I can't bring in Microsoft. No, no, I, I, I know. I, th I think for some reason I was aware of that. It's, it's just an upgrade to the, to the equipment that's there already. It's, it's a, a renewal. It's a, it's a renewal on the maintenance, and it's also an upgrade because we have two additional modules that were added on, municipal court citation and driver license scanning. I, I, I'm aware of this. Do I hear a motion? Move it approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And just for the record, the reason why we bring it to, to uh, City Commission is because in the purchasing policy, every item that exceeds the threshold of $35,000 needs City Commission approval. And that's the reason why we bring it every time we, we go beyond the, the, the threshold. That's good. Go ahead. Item 23, consideration and action to award a contract for purchase, delivery, and installation of new and existing furniture modifications to accommodate new radio frequency identification display system for the Brownsville Public Library. Staff recommendation is to award a contract for new uh, furniture and existing furniture modifications to accommodate the new radio frequency identification display system for the Brownsville Public Library system. This is going to Library Interiors of Texas, out of Austin, Texas, in the amount of $71,085.16. This procurement reflects interlocal cooperative contract agreement through choice facility partners, and this is coming out of the Harris County Department of Education contract pricing, and we, <coughs> have, we have a local agreement with, uh, with Harrison County. Uh, funding for this project is available through account 01490-710, which has a, a balance of 300000 The administration of the library concurs with this recommendation. Good yeah. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 24, consideration and action to award a contract for purchase, delivery, and installation and training of new radio frequency identification system to replace the library's original magnetic strip anti-theft anti system for security and inventory equipment for the Brownsville Public Library automation system. This item is it's um, it's the second phase of the of the previous one that I just um, that I ju that we just uh, uh, that you just awarded, and this is for the purchase, delivery, installation, and training of the new radio frequency identification system to, to replace the, library, the library's original magnetic strip anti-theft system for security and inventory equipment for the library automation system. This is going to tech logic circulation systems of Inwood, West Virginia in the amount of $228,665. Funding for this project is available through account 01 497 uh, the same, uh, the same uh, uh, account that we used for the previous uh, agenda. And uh, there's, there's a uh, recommendation for the, uh, from the library. This is to replace the old system, that it's obsolete. Yes. Do I hear a motion? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 25, consideration and action to award a contract for the re rehabilitation and reconstruction project for hurricane disaster funds. Staff recommendation is to award a contract for rehabilitation and reconstruction project for the hurricane disaster funds to Brownsville Housing Authority of Brownsville, Texas, the highest ranked firm. This contract shall commence subsequent to award by city commission 
and will be completed no later than September 30th, 2012. Funding for this project is available through the Texas General Land Office in the amount of $1,543,118. The administration <coughs> of the Planning and Community Development Department concurs with this recommendation. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 26, consideration and action to award a, co a term contract for the purchase and delivery of leather gear for the Brownsville Police Department. Recommendation is to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of leather gear. This is a term contract for the Brownsville Police Department to Galt Incorporated of Lexington, Kentucky, the low responsible bidder at the stipulated prices, the, there's a tabulation sheet attached to the, the analysis. This contract shall commence up, uh, upon approval by City Commission and shall expire September 30th, 2012 with an additional two extensions of uh, one year each. So it, 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 it will be extended for up to three years. Funding for this contract is derived from account 0131704. The administration of the police department concurs with this recommendation. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item seven, consideration and action to renew the annual maintenance contract for HVAC and R system equipment for the Brownsville Police Department headquarters building. Sub recommendation is to award a, a term contract <coughs> or renewal contract for HVAC system uh, equipment maintenance at the Brownsville Police Department headquarters building to train out of San Antonio, Texas in the amount of $49,237. This reflects TCPN contract pricing. The contract shall commence upon uh, award by city commission and shall expire September 30th, 2012. Funding for this annual maintenance contract is will be, will be uh, it's available to the general fund, account 01310-752, under maintenance and equipment. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll adjourn. Thank All you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. <coughs>